2022 grade 7 Goss Math Contest, questions 11 through 20. The sum of the prime factors of 42 is 42, if you break it down into its prime factors, is 2 times 3 times 7. So then what the sum of those prime factors, which would be 2 plus 3 plus 7, which I believe is 12. So the answer is C. In the diagram, triangle PQRS is isosceles, with PQ equal to PR. And QRST is a rectangle, and angle QPR is 70, PQR is X, RQT is Y. What is the value of X plus Y? Okay, because it's isosceles right over here, this diagram that they have, that means that this angle is the same as this angle. So if that's X, the other one is X also. Then they told me in the question that QRST is a rectangle, so therefore these are all right angles. So that means that Y is 90 degrees. Okay, so first let's calculate X. As you all know, the sum of the angles of a triangle add up to 180, so X plus X plus 70 is 180. So therefore 2X is 110, and therefore X is 55. And then they want X plus Y. Okay, well we have X, we have Y x plus y is going to be 55 plus 90, which is 145, and therefore number 12 is D. How many two-digit numbers have at least one digit that is a 4? Okay, so it's a two-digit number, so the 4 could be either here, or the 4 could be either here, correct? Now, this number can be any number from 0 to 9, so that's 10 choices. So there's going to be 10 possible ways of creating a number that looks like that, 40, 40 to, basically the number is 40 to 49. There's 10 of those. This number here, the choice for this first digit, can, it cannot be a 0, right? Because if it's a 0, it, doesn't, it won't be a two-digit number. It'll be just 4. So the choices are just 1 through 9, so that means... We have nine possible. But this question is a little tricky uh, because you think, okay, 10 plus 9 is 19. Let's circle 19 and off we go. It's a little tricky because you've double counted. 44 appears here and it also will appear in this list also. So because 44 appears twice, you have to subtract that from that 19 to get 18. So number 13 is C. Three identical squares form rectangle W, X, Y, Z, as shown. The perimeter of X, W, X, Y, Z is 56. The area is what? Okay. So because they're squares, they're all equal in terms of side length. So I'll just call this X, X, like that, right? They're all X, the lengths of the sides. So they told me the perimeter is 56. So the perimeter, if you just look at it in terms of x, would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8x, right? But they told me that's 56. So therefore, 56 is equal to 8x. So solving, we get x is equal to 56 divided by 8, which is 7. So now they want the area. Okay, the area of this looks like length times width, as always, area. The length is 3x. The width is x. So that is 3x squared. Now x is 7, so plug that in. 3 times 7 squared. 49 times 3, I believe, is 147. So the answer is B. A public holiday is always celebrated on the third Wednesday of a certain month. In that month, the holiday cannot occur on which of the following days? Okay. So one, two, let's just put a, make a little calendar here. Okay, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, so I'm gonna go only up to 22 because I think the largest is 22, right? Yeah, okay. So you just have to fiddle around. It, it, basically, what is not possible? So if I put Wednesday in any of these, I could probably get the third Wednesday 
to be any of these guys. So 16 through 21. Yeah, all of these guys. But if I put, mm, let me think here. Uh, do, 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 do. I think extreme case scenario. So put the Wednesday here on the 7th. So the next Wednesday would be 14th and the next Wednesday would be 21st. If you did that, you would obviously be able to get the 21st, but you could never get 22nd as the third Wednesday. Yeah, and that's pretty much all this question is. You're just kind of fiddling around with the calendar and seeing what is not possible. Everything else is possible because they're asking what cannot occur. All right, there you go. 15 is B. A standard fair coin is tossed three times. What is the probability that the three outcomes are all the same? Okay, so we got three outcomes, right? So you can either have heads, 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 which is all three heads, or one tail. So heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads. Or you can have two tails. So heads, tails, 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 head, tails, 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 head. Or three to tails. There you go, T, T, T. So there's eight possible ways that this could show up, right? So the probability would be over eight because the, the denominator is always the total. Now, our specific condition goes up in the numerator. And in our case, it's that the three outcomes are all the same. So the only time the three outcomes are all the same is this guy and this guy. So two times, twice. So there you go. That's the probability. And, of course, the lowest terms is one-fourth. So number 16, the answer is C. Number 17, in the sum shown, the letter, uh, each letter is represented with a digit from 1 to 9, the value of P plus Q plus R. All right, so this is one of those, you have to really fiddle around with this, and um, I'm going to show you so that the solution. I'll let you do the fiddling around. I'm just going to so show you the solution because the fiddling around is, you know, you don't need to hear me listen. Uh, you don't he need to listen to me do all that. So let's just concentrate on the first uh, column there. R plus 2P is going to be equal to 2, right? But that's not possible because the numbers uh, are between 1 and 9. And even if they were both 1, it would be 3. So it's most likely going to have a carry, right? It's most likely going to have a carry. And I've already done the legwork, and the carry is actually 2. Carry is not 1, it's 2. Okay. Got it? <laughs> All right. So then we'd go or turn our attention to the next uh, uh, column. And that column is 2 plus Q plus 2P is going to equal 2. Well, that's not possible. And obviously, it's going to have a carry. And the carry is 2 again. OK? We're just creating equations. And then finally, the last column uh, gives me 2 plus 2P is equal to 20. OK? And then you just solve. So for this guy, if you solve, that's pretty straightforward. It's going to be 2P is 18, so P is 9. So there you go. You already got 1. And then I guess you just substitute it back into here. So that means R would be 4. And then substitute that back into here, or value for P, actually. And that will give me that, what, uh, Q is 2, right? Yeah, Q is 2. So there you go. It, it's going to take a little bit of fiddling around. What is the carry and all that stuff? But in the end, you'll be able to figure out the values for P, Q, and R, and then you add them up. So you get 9 plus 2 plus 4, and that is 15. So there you go. Uh, number 17 is C. Box A contains one 100-gram block, one 20-gram block, and three 5-gram blocks. Box B contains one 50 gram block and three 10 gram blocks. Jasmine, a very nice name, moves some of the blocks from box A to box B and some of the blocks from box B to box A. After these moves, box A contains 65 grams less than it originally did and box B contains 65 grams more. What is the fewest number of blocks that Jasmine could have moved from box A to box B? Okay, so this is one of those questions you just got to fiddle around, you know. How if I move one, if I move two, if I move three, blah, blah, blah. So, all right. 
So you got 100 grams, you got a 20 gram, and you got a 5 gram, right? And here you got 50 gram, and you got 10 grams, three of those guys. And everything else is just one, right? No, 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 the 5 grams, I believe, uh, there's three of those. Oh, got to make sure I do this right. Okay. But the other ones, there's just one of, okay. So it's basically, like I said, it's just fiddling around. So if I move one, can I make this happen? Because in the end, what you want is this to be minus 65 grams and this to be plus 65 grams in terms of its weight compared to what it had originally, right? After these moves, box A is 65 grams less and box B is 65 grams more. Okay, so I'll let you do the fiddling around, very similar to other questions, and I'll show you the correct solution. So when you try to do it with one move, it, there's no way. If you try to do it with two moves, there's also no way. But when you get up to three moves, you can do it. So the first move is you move from A to B 100 grams. Okay? And then you can also move a 20 and one 5. So in total, what you've done is you've moved uh, 125. So in total, you've moved 125 from A to B. And then you move from B to A a 50 and a 10. So that means that when that is done, this comes down to six minus 65, right? Because you, you subtracted 125 initially, but then you added the 60. So that gives you minus 65. So this one is great. Let's see what happens over here. Initially, uh, when you added 125, and, and then you subtracted 60, so that gives you positive 65, and that's what this is. So it works out. Now they're asking, what is the fewest number of blocks that Jasmine could move from box A to box B? So she moved these three guys. So three is the answer. And therefore, that would be choice A for number 18. In a candy dish, the ratio of red to blue candies is 3 to 5. When three blue candies are removed, the ratio of red to blue candies becomes two to three. How many more blue candies than red candies were in the dish before any candies were moved? Okay, so initially it was three over five, and that represents R over B, right? Ratio. And then later, what they do is they take away three from the blue, and that gives you two over three. Correct? So let's just solve cross multiply 3B is equal to 5R. And if you cross multiply here, 3r is equal to 2b minus 6. And then we got two equations, two variables you can just solve. So however you want to do this. Um, let's see, are there any simple substitutions? Mm, well, they're going to turn into fractions. So let me multiply this by 2 so I don't get a fraction. And then if I multiply this guy by 3, 9r is equal to... 6b minus 18. Oh, okay, there you go. So I've got a 6b. I can do that now. 9r. For this 6b, I can substitute the 10r. And therefore, 18 is equal to r. And then plugging back in, you'll be able to solve for b relatively easily. It'll be 30. So what are they asking? How many more blue candies than red candies were in the dish before any candies were removed? Well, initially, there was 30 blue, 18 red. So 30 minus 18 is the difference, which is 12. So that would mean choice B for number 19. Four friends standing in a row for a picture are in the following order. Anu, Brad, Chai, and Diego. The friends then move so that Anu is not in the first position, Brad is not in the second position, Chai is not in the third, and Diego is not in the fourth. In how many ways can the friends do this? That is. In how many ways can they rearrange themselves so that each person is not in their original position? Okay, so this is a, one of those pain in the behind questions where you got to figure out all the different possibilities. N not fun. And it's a time consumer too, and you don't have any time on math contests. So, okay. So for the first position, you can only have Brad, Chai, and Diego, right? Because Anu is not in the first position. For the second position, you can have 
uh, and you chai and diego because brad is not in the second position and so on right you guys get the point you can read you have a b and d as possible choices for the third position and for the fourth position you have possible choices of a b c now you have to figure out how many ways can we rearrange this so i just did this manually there was no uh, trick so i started with the first guy here b and i said okay what can i do if i choose b for the first position right these lines represent the positions what can i do for the second one and then i just kind of went on from there so i can choose a and then can i choose i can't choose a and b so the only one here is d and then the only one left is c so there's one possibility you see how i did that and i just kind of went on from there so I, I was able to exhaust the a's so then i started with b a i'm sorry but started with b c this time i went i exhausted the a's so then i went to c and then if i went to c then this guy could be a d and then this could be an a so there's another one and I believe that exhausts the C's. So then I went to B and then D, this guy. And then obviously this has to be uh, a B, D. Is there? I think that's it. B, D. Oh, yeah. This could be an A and this could be a C. So there you go. So see how I did that there? And then in a similar way, you notice how I exhausted the B's. And then I went to the C here, starting with C. And I'm, I, without, I'm not going to walk you through it. I mean, you guys can figure this out. It's C, A, D, B, C, D, A, B, and C, D, B, A. That's another three that you get. That exhausts the Cs. And then finally, we get down to the final one, which is D. And when you go through this, you figure out there can be D, A, B, C, D, cab, and D, C, B, A. And there you go. So in total, you get nine just manually. I, I, I mean, I, I can't think of any other way of doing this. So number 20, the answer is B.